All right, gentlemen. Andrew. We're going to move to the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. I expect good sportsman like conduct from both of you. You understood? Coffee is a little high. Here is good. It's a little high. Is that? We got it. All right. Shake hands. Give me good sportsman like conduct. Touch them up. Okay. If you can fight and you're ready to fight, Jesse Ferguson is a good opponent. If you can't fight or you're not ready to fight, he's the wrong opponent. <laughs> Interesting uh, harbinger of something later to come tonight. You saw Joe Cortez talking to Jesse the Boogeyman about the height of his protective cup. And that's a subject for Grant's opponent, Ahmad Abdin, who believes that Michael Grant gets an unfair advantage in wearing that up around his chest in most fights. Jesse's coming out right now to let Galata know that he's in a fight, oh, maybe try to hurt him. Maybe his only chance. Yeah, he may not be in shape to go a full 10 rounds tonight, being that he took the fight on such a short notice. Ferguson says he had an inkling weeks ago that something might happen to Thunder and that as he trained in the gym for the past couple of weeks, he was keeping in, his back, in the back of his mind the possibility of stepping up into this opportunity. I'm sure he's had these opportunities to come at him several times before like this, so he knows that if he stays in shape, that he may get an opportunity, and if he does, he wants to be there to answer. And he's respected by matchmakers, despite his 17 losses, as a professional who will give you an effort. This despite the fact that many believe he did not make an effort in his two-round knockout loss to Riddick Bowe when he had a big chance to fight for the heavyweight title. Well, that was different circumstances. It's like the boogeyman likes to come out at night, but a bright light got shined on him all, this, all of a sudden when he came out to fight Riddick Bowe. So it kind of put him in shock. Yeah, and Riddick Bowe is a hell of a fighter at that time. <laughs> It was the second of Bo's title defenses after he first took the title from Evander Holyfield in November of 92. First he fought against Michael Dokes in Madison Square Garden and then Ferguson in Washington, D.C. Now Galata throwing right hands over the top. In his victory over Tim Witherspoon a few months ago, Galata fought a remarkably controlled boxer-like performance. And when Galata gets his jab going, there aren't too many heavyweights who can do anything about it. When he gets the rhythm on his jab, he's very tough to contend with. Yeah, he is, and mainly because he has such a big frame. He's a big heavyweight. He's not a little guy. Once he gets those long arms to work, it's hard for the shorter guys to get he's up with him. He's hurting Jesse right here. He's throwing some heavy shots, complete control, good short, hard shots from Goliath. Ferguson may not get the kinds of opportunities he hoped for, sneaking in here at the last minute. Galata off to a good start in round one with the jab, the right over the top, and the occasional left hook. The one punch he's never really learned to throw well is an uppercut. The left hook seems to hurt Galata every time he throws. I mean, uh, the boogie Ferguson, man every yeah. time he gets hit. The second time he staggered Ferguson in the round. This is a big, big round for Galata. A two-point round. And Galata keeping the pressure on down the stretch of the round. Ferguson seemed to expect him to back off at some point, but Andrew never did. seems to have emerged from his crying jag and the fetal position very, very well. A very strong first round. He's ready to fight. Target practice. Galata throwing 97 punches in round one. Heavyweight average is about 50 to 55. Galata has been active when he's 
on the beam in the past, but never at that level. 97 punches in round one, 51 connected by Andrew Galano. I also think he might be a little bit quicker at this weight, down around 238, than he was up in the mid 240s. Oh, that was a good hook. Roy was talking about uh, Galata's big frame and just to emphasize the point, Roy, it's not just that he's big. He's an athlete. He's quick. He has good foot movement. Uh, he's probably as gifted an athlete as any of the top big heavyweights, including Grant. Yes, yes he is. And you don't see much fat on his body. He's got a bloody nose, incidentally, so Jesse did hit him. Yep. But one thing I notice here, he hasn't thrown a body punch that I can recall. Well, maybe that's their insurance against the low blows. <laughs> You'll recall in the middle rounds of Bo Galata 2, Lou Duba yelling at him, don't throw a single punch to the body. But they couldn't stop him from delivering the low blows. Pressure and fatigue will make you do things you don't want to do. Almost launched an uppercut there, pulled it back. Ferguson, a considerably sneakier and uh, more flexible fighter than Jimmy Thunder. Thunder's essentially a one-note tune who comes in, goes straight forward, and hopes that his power will deliver something big for him. Jesse has many more tricks than that. And perhaps that's one of the reasons that Galata felt disrespected by the last minute change. Well, oh, yes. There was Galata's second low blow, according to the referee. There was one a little earlier in the round. And look for Ferguson to maximize the drama in every one of them. Certainly one of the things that Jesse would have thought of coming in tonight is, can he get under Galata's skin somehow? Okay, you, you can't win a fight on a low blow. Okay, okay, you walk, walk around, walk around, walk around, you got a little rest. Don't hit him back, but then I don't have a fight for you. Don't be starting to retaliate. Harold Letterman, quickly the rule. Jim, he's got up to five minutes, Jesse Ferguson. He can't win. If he doesn't continue, he loses by abandonment. He has to continue. <laughs> I don't know. If I was Jesse, I might try one along the border someplace. Jesse, just, <laughs> just to see if I can get him upset. He just told the referee, I'm going to hit him back. <laughs> the referee said, don't you do that. I'll take a point from you. So what? <laughs> I would have never said anything to the referee about it. Again, that was a terrific left hook inside by Galata. Ferguson reeled backward, but now Jesse keeps coming forward again. My guess is we're not going to see too many more body punches from Galata. He doesn't need them in this fight. Ferguson there, but it didn't really connect. Come on, Jesse, you waiting on one stop, man. You gotta use that, use your left hand now. Right? Don't work with your jab, you know? Stay on high. Go Nick there. Hold on, Nick. Come on. Oh, okay. Give me that, give me that. Take a look at the more obvious of the two low blows that Galata landed in that fight. One thing I noticed there, Roy, was he did dip his shoulder and try to sh throw that punch correctly. No more body shots. No more body shots. That's not the way it wound up. Just keep it. Hit him right there. And you see the lopsided punch at numbers through round number two. Keep hitting him with the jab. Galata has a scar on the back of his head that I believe is from the cell phone with which he was attacked in the uh, riot back on uh, <laughs> July 11, 1996. <laughs> Round three of a scheduled 10. Second uh, fight tonight is scheduled for 12 rounds. Grant against Abdeen. Step 
I can't say that I've seen Galata show this much poise in a long time. He seems to be well under control of everything he's doing. Similar to the control he showed in his uh, root going performance against Witherspoon in Warsaw, October 2. Hard right hand lands for Galata. Ferguson backing up. Andrew trying here to join Carl Williams, Mike Tyson, Bruce Selden, Riddick Bowe, Frank Bruno, Jeremy Williams, and Donnell Nicholson among heavyweights to have knocked Jesse Ferguson out. Almost all of them pretty good punches. Ferguson's last fight was an upset of Obed Sullivan, once a top 10 fighter. So he's come into this fight saying, I'm just maturing as a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, Galat is knocking the maturity right out of him to say nothing of other things. You know, some nights, the guys that come to the fights, the older guys, you never know when they're going to come there and start to really look their age. And tonight, Jesse is sort of looking his age. 41, okay, although, okay. although he thinks that at 41, he's a better fighter than he was 15 years ago. Oh, we're getting there, we're getting there. He could be a better thinking fighter than he was 15 years ago. Got a relatively late start in his uh, professional career. Had a pitched battle with Carl the Truth Williams, and Williams knocked him out late. Off his performance there, guess Jesse got a chance to be the opponent in February 18, or 1986 against a very young heavyweight prospect named Mike Tyson. And a lot of people will remember that Tyson fight. It was his network television debut on ABC, and it was the fight after which he said, I was trying to drive his nose bone into his brain, describing the intention of his uppercut punch. Still to come tonight, Michael Grant will try to drive Ahmad Abdeen's nose bone into his brain, or something similar, as he takes on his former sparring partner, Grant's return to the ring after several months of layoff and a hepatitis A infection. Huh? We want your neck? Yes, yes. Keep your feet right, right? Get set. You understand me? Let's get off of them combinations now. Find your range. Okay. Huh? Feet oh, Pop the jam. Pop the jam. Find your range. Keep your feet right. Okay. Okay. That jam, when he drops the head down, uppercut up under the chin. Okay? Forget about the button. Left uppercut. Double the jam, left uppercut under the chin. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, Lou. Let's go, Lou. Let's go, Lou. the boogeyman Ferguson heaving just a little bit as he comes out for round four against Andrew Galata. Galata set the pace with a sizzling round one, throwing 97 punches and hasn't much let up since then. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? You, you know, Jim, I don't know what he was crying about. I think he looks like a million dollars. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Andrew Galata. I tell you, Jim, if, if you told me that any of these judges had all 10-8 rounds, I'd agree with him. I mean, Andrew Galata is very, very close to a 10-8 round in all three rounds. Totally dominating the fight. Looks like a million dollars. in the upper deck just craving the moment when they can break out the flags and start chanting again it's a little dull for that right now most of them still on their feet as they watch their man a lot of people just wrote Galata off the Lewis experience 
figuring that if he had not been psychologically broken by all of his self-destructiveness before that, surely this would be the straw that breaks the camel's back. It's a, as Larry has pointed out, the lidocaine shot just hours before coming to the arena to fight against Lewis, arrived an hour and a half late, didn't adequately warm up. He says that he felt as though he was in a daze walking into the ring that night. It wasn't just an alibi, uh, the normal uh, prize fight alibi either, Jim, because if you recall, after the fight, he suffered a seizure, was taken out on a stretcher, and that's when they found the connection between the drug he had taken uh, and the knockout. Uh, he took so many big, good punches from Riddick Bow. I'm a little hesitant to say that this is a guy with a bad jaw. I wouldn't say he was a guy with a bad jaw, but then it is a guy with a good punch. Big punch. Yeah. And to the degree that a fighter freezes in a situation like that, Galata throws. Well, he was unprofessional in taking that shot. Neither Lou Duva nor anyone else in the corner or his handlers knew about it. It was something he had arranged privately, resulting in a $23 million lawsuit, I understand, against the doctor who administered it. Round four coming to a close. Jesse Ferguson taking a solid beating from Anthony Colada, but standing his ground. Good. You change speeds on him. I want you to change speeds on him a little bit in this round. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh. You calm down. Listen to what I'm saying. That was a good round. You change speeds up. When you change speeds on him, you hurt him. But I don't want you standing right directly in front of him trying to trade okay. power okay. points. I want you stepping around him. Okay. This one sure. This one work. You better hide, man. Come on, we got it. Come on, get a rinse. Turn it up. Come on. Come on, just we can get this guy now, man. You waiting too long, man. Come on, man. All right. Come on. Hey. Come on, let's do it, man. You're blowing it. Come on, man. Come on, these guys ready to go. Put your shit down. Right now, the only question appears to be whether Galata can finish Ferguson in style. Oh, hold tight, hold tight. Come on, guys. All right, time in. Let's go. Momentary delay while Cortez waited for Lou Duva and Ronnie Shields to exit the ring in Galata's corner. You always have to wonder in a fight like this, will Galata get bored and get caught with a big punch throw? Well, or will he get disqualified? You have to regard it as at least a possibility in every one of his fights. Even prior to his self-destruction against Bo in July of 96 when he was winning the fight easily and was disqualified on low blows the first time. Even prior to that, he had purposely head-butted Donnell Nicholson in a fight that he was winning easily. He had purposely bitten Samson Paluha on the shoulder in a fight that he was winning easily. So this guy can go off at any moment, <laughs> and it doesn't matter whether he's winning or losing. Yeah, but he seems to be showing a lot more control tonight than he did in those fights in the early rounds. I think and I hope he learned his lesson. And I don't think we'll be seeing any more of that from Andrew. Galata's wife is a Polish-born American practicing attorney. Uh, and, and she is clearly the common sense conduit through which his handlers and the people around him try to communicate and hope to establish some solid ground. In our meetings with Galata, the norm is that he begins the answer to each question, and then either Lou Duba or his wife finishes the answer for him. <laughs> Ferguson appears intent on just hanging around and seeing what strange things are gonna happen. Yeah, he doesn't even seem to have much steam on his punches now. Jesse trying to step around to land a left hook to the body, but doing so almost in slow motion. That was a 
pretty good hook by the boogeyman. And there's some light. Doubling up on the left hook. He just can't seem to get out the way, get out, out of the way of Andrew's straight right lead. When Andrew steps up and begins pumping his jab and working behind it, Ferguson can't throw. So it's jab, jab, right hand, or jab, left hook. And the right hand lands every time. Valera landed a punch just after the bell. Ferguson reached around the referee to retaliate. The referee is taking a point away from him. So Ferguson is the first to be penalized in the fight. There have been warnings to Galata for low blows, but it's Jesse who takes the first point penalty. Make this fight easy. Make it easy. Step around him now. Use your legs this round. He's tired. Make him come to you. That wasn't that late of a punch. Obviously, it was thrown just at or a millisecond before the bell rang. Yes, and it could be that Ferguson is anxious to capitalize on any opportunity to create havoc in the ring and get the lot outside of his envelope. Well, he's probably a little frustrated right now. Nothing seems to be going his way. And sometimes when a guy gets to this point in a fight, it's easy for anything to make him go off. Ferguson landed 19 punches in round number five. That's by far his best round in the bout. But Galata landed 31 of 68. So Andrew continues to dominate, both in terms of copy box numbers and the subjective impression of what we're seeing in the ring. And Ferguson continues to hang in, hoping to be the beneficiary of something strange. Yeah, but his punches, his power punches don't seem to hurt Andrew at all. Jesse trying to duck the right hand. And Galata still landing with constant accuracy there. As in that right hand. Is Jesse looking to set him up for something, Roy? Jesse's looking for one punch to try to hurt Galata, but I don't really think his punching power is the same as it, used, as it usually is. I don't think he truly can hurt Galata with a power punch right now. I think there's a cut over Ferguson's left eye. That'll mean that cut man Willie Folk will have to go to work to help keep him in the fight. And I think it came from that overhand right. That would make sense, yeah. I think that cut is below the eyebrow. Makes it a tough place for cut man Willie Pope to do his job. Ferguson is taking a real beating here. Chopping right hand by Galata. You know, one of the things I was curious about was whether Galata, in, in his eagerness, to be more controlled and measured would lose his aggression. But he's showing here, at least, against Jesse Ferguson, that he has a good balance between boxing him and aggressing him. And he's still defending himself very well. So if he worried that he wasn't going to be able to look good against Ferguson, so far that concern appears unfounded. Both of our experts impressed with what they see of Galata here. When last Jesse Ferguson fought on this network against Samson Pouha, I mistakenly identified his cut man as Leon Tab because that was the information I'd been given. Leon wasn't there that night. Willie Folk was. And Willie Folk is here again tonight. Didn't he fight again? This month on Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel, we'll investigate offshore gambling operations, which take in hundreds of millions of dollars in illegal sports bets. And we'll look at the grueling and often frustrating life of an NFL assistant coach. If you missed the premiere this week, you can catch it January 31 and then again on 4-4.
February 4, Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. Of course, of course I'll be wrong. Right. You okay, uh, Jesse? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm here to protect you for taking out certain yes. punishment. That's my job in here. Close your mouth. Yes. What about this one? Jesse, you're not working hard enough, Jesse, and you're not keeping your feet right. That's what's making you look bad. You understand? Keep, it, keep your feet right and work off the jab. And shake your back. My recollection, Jim, is that Jesse also was against uh, Haseem Rahman, if you recall. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a difficult, grueling fight. Won by Rahman. Won easily by Rahman. And, you know, this, this, this fight... You know, as far as we, anything we can tell, barring the unforeseen, which you never can fully bar with Galata, um, is really over. I mean, it has been for several rounds, almost from the start. Galata is simply outclassing him. The only question here is whether he can go out in style. Chopping right hand again lands for Galata, up behind Ferguson's left ear. It was fascinating between rounds to hear trainer Roman Fuller asking Jesse to just set his feet in the right position, work behind the jab. I don't think I've seen him make a legitimate effort to land the jab against Galata yet in the fight. No, but Galata's making him keep that left hand at home to defend himself. Ferguson has fired some left hooks, generally in retaliation after Galata has landed a combination. Galata flirting with body punches again there. Ferguson comes upstairs and lands a right hand. Certainly Galata unruffled when Ferguson lands a punch. And remember that Jesse got the notice two days ago and accepted the opportunity to fight despite the fact he was in gym shape, not really fighting shape. As this fight goes on, it looks more and more like Galata's a big four-wheel drive sport vehicle and Jesse a very used car. Cortez again warning Galata for blows to Ferguson's hip, but no point deduction. Again, the only point deduction in the bout so far against Ferguson for attempting to hit after the bell. The top is up too high. Also, come on, let's go. Certainly on the basis of what we've seen so far, Galata has earned another look against a higher quality opponent. I agree with that. A lot of distance across the top of the right hand. <laughs> Joe Cortez, well aware that Ferguson wants to create havoc in there, just flings Jesse out of the way. <laughs> Larry? Here's a look at uh, Galata against Tim Witherspoon back in October. Yeah, and he fought a very similar fight against a, a more dangerous, uh, higher-level opponent who was also, at the end of his career, uh, dominated Witherspoon. Witherspoon looking to land the big right hand in the He's fight, never did Let's anything make it a little substantive. Bit easier, all right? Let's see a little more movement to the left. The overhand right is killing you. Sometimes come back. No body shot. Get about. You don't need it. Up and cut. Jab right, up and cut. Overhand right, left up and cut. Jab, overhand right, left up and cut. Anything. All right, so yes, pick it up now, Jesse. You're only throwing one of these punches. Through seven rounds so far by CompuBox numbers, Galata has doubled Ferguson in punch output, 533 to 266, and more than tripled him in connections. Galata landing 264 punches, only 83 for Ferguson. Jabs, forget it. Galata, 106 out of 226. So it's a CompuBox wipeout with Andrew Galata easily beating Jesse Ferguson 
going into the eighth. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through seven? I got it a shout out, Jim. 70 to 62. Andrew Galata, seven rounds to nothing. Jim, two things I want to point out here. Number one, even though the punch came after the bell, ending the fifth round, and the fifth round was over, the point comes off for Jesse Ferguson's score for the fifth round, not the sixth. So Joe Cortez took that point at the end of the fifth. It comes off Ferguson's score for the fifth round. And the second thing is I always talk about ring generalship. Watch the way Andrew Galata steps to his right hand to stay away from Jesse Ferguson. To step to his right to stay away from Jesse Ferguson's big right hand. That's good ring generalship. You gotta give Galata credit for that. Well, Larry, uh, Galata's been mentioned by some people as a possible opponent for Mike Tyson as Tyson tries to make his way back toward prominence in the division. Off what you see tonight, do you think Tyson's people would consider uh, putting Mike in with Galata? It's a good question. Uh, what the wags were saying was that if Galata looked too good, he would never get the fight because uh, Tyson's handlers are not that interested in putting him in with a good fighter yet or a dangerous fighter or a highly skilled one. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what they think. Uh, he certainly is a, more dangerous than a lot of the other opponents I've heard, I've heard as uh, possibles for Tyson. Does he look as good to you, Roy, as he looked in 1996 when he was dominating Riddick Bowe at close range? He looks even better to me because he had to do two things. He had to remain in control of what he's doing, but he also has to move around the boogeyman to make sure that the boogeyman does not catch him with a big shot to upset him or to make him lose his cool. So he's showing more poise here than he ever showed before, and he's looking good because he's not walking straight in on the boogeyman. He's going to the left, he's going to the right, and he's changing his attack. And three more effective combinations for Galata as Roy was making the point. So you see a man under control using his multiplicity of formidable skills. Closing in on a possible wear-em-down knockout of Jesse Ferguson. And you wonder, where does Galata go from here, and who will take the risk of giving him a chance? You think he, he could show this kind of poise against a better quality fighter who took some real heat on <laughs> That's why we have fight now, so we can see. It's a fascinating <laughs> question. It always has been with this man. Still to come tonight, Ahmad Abdeen came to this country at 15 years old. His family owns a tow truck service in Houston, and as a result of his first tonight, their 40 truck fleet will become 42 sometime next week. And they hope they don't have to take him away as behind one of those tow trucks tonight. Though so the possibility certainly exists. The connect percentages impressive throughout the fight for Galata in the eighth round was his best round. You can hit this guy with right hands. You can leave him with right hands and come back with left He's dropping everything over there. I'm saying, I got it. Find your range. You understand the man? Sweat being wiped up in both corners, even as the action begins in center ring. Ferguson's face, a mask of pain now, as Galata has drawn blood and puffed up Jesse around both eyes. Well, Jesse's an old Marine, spent four years in the Marines, hasn't landed a lot here, but he is, uh, he's a warrior. And I'm pretty sure he'll do all that he can to make sure he's here at the end. Jesse Ferguson from the Eastern North Carolina tobacco town of Nightdale against Andrew Galata of Warsaw. And Chicago. That's correct. shakes his head as if to say, you didn't hurt me, but it was one of Jesse's better moments in the whole fight. 
When a fighter says he didn't hurt me, chances are he hurt you. <laughs> Sometimes that's true. Sometimes you ever not. do that, Roy? You ever you ever get your bell rung and immediately look at the other guy and shake your head like, no, no. No, I don't do that. I, uh, if my bell gets rung, you can believe that you know my bell got rung. <laughs> Down against Deval was a flash knockdown. Who's the last guy to really hurt you? In uh, I don't know. It's been so long. Uh huh. I think I've been hurt more by punches that miss me than I have by the ones that connect. Well, uh, or as director Mark Payton points out from the truck, some of those judges in Seoul hurt you pretty badly. <laughs> yeah, they hurt me real bad. Same Olympics where Andrew Galata won a bronze medal in the heavyweight division. Did you see him fight over there, Roy? No, I never got a chance to see Andrew fight. I probably wouldn't have known who he was anyway. Well, he weighed about 30 pounds, 35 pounds less at that time. Yes, and remember in the Olympics, the big class is super heavyweight. So if you're a heavyweight, you're somewhere just below that. I believe the heavyweight limit is 201. Yep. Right, but Ray Mercer, I believe, won that gold medal. He won the heavyweight gold medal. Riddick Cole won the... No, no, nope. no. no Riddick Cole got this, a silver. I said won the silver medal <laughs> in the super, he super heavyweight division. That's Dennis right. Lewis won the gold medal. That's right. We're vamping here, folks, because uh, this fight seems to have an ordained finish. Jesse Ferguson and Andrew Galata. And regardless of how badly embarrassed Ferguson may be by CompuBox numbers and by the competitive picture of what's happened in the fight, by making it to the last of 10 rounds, having taken the fight on about 72 hours notice, I think you have to say he's done his job. Harold, how do you have it through now? <laughs> I tell you, I got Andrew Galata at least 11 points ahead. Nine to nothing, 90 to 79, Andrew Galata. Jim, there's two flawless performances out there tonight. One by Andrew Galata and the other by referee Joe Cortez is doing a beautiful job keeping control of this fight. Galata really picking up the pace, trying to finish him in the tent, but he's so far ahead, it's amazing. I tell you, it just shows us everything. But I think also because he has fought in a more measured style, he has more left here at the end. Well, one of the things... And of course, he hasn't taken much punishment, I mean, even which when always he, helps. Even when he, when he was fighting at the pinnacle of the division against Bo, his trainer, Roger Bloodworth, acknowledged he didn't really know how to breathe in the ring. They've still been trying to teach him from that day forward how to breathe and keep his energy level somewhat constant in the ring. And obviously, he's doing much better in that regard. But he's gotten a lot better in that regard. I'm highly impressed with the left and right movement tonight. He's just a big, cat-quick athlete for a 240-pound heavyweight. There aren't too many people as gifted as Andrew Galata. Somebody hands me a note from behind. I don't even know where the note comes from, but the observation of somebody here at ringside is, well, he's fought himself out of a chance at Tyson anytime soon. <laughs> Likely to be a popular observation after this performance by Galata. What are they trying to say about Tyson? 
Well, it may take time. I guess they're saying it'll take time. Well, I, you know, Mike is trying to make money right now, and that's very understandable. I just don't think he would want to rush in and take an unnecessary chance until he's gotten his cap feet back together. Against a guy who outweighs him by 20 pounds. Kalana trying one more time to put the hurt on Jesse, the boogeyman, Ferguson, but the boogeyman has come in, taken his medicine, and he's going to be able to stand up for 10 rounds and say, oh, come on. He ain't nothing. He didn't knock me out. <laughs> Polish crowd chanting in Polish in the upper deck. They would have loved to have seen a knockout, but they've seen a totally competent professional performance all the way. And Ferguson's going to finish this bout with blood go, flowing on both sides. coming back from the humiliations that Andrew Galata has visited upon himself. And I think we should give him credit for making the effort. Harold, would you like to uh, show us what a shutout looks like on the scorecard? Jim, I think there's no question. I've got it 100 to 88, 10 rounds to nothing, Andrew Galata. You have to give uh, Andrew Galata an extra point to round five because Joe took a point from him, and you have to give Andrew Galata an extra point in round eight because he won it so big. That's a 10-8 round without a knockdown. So it's Galata easy. You are a master of the obvious, Harold. <laughs> was supposed to be Galata against Jimmy Thunder. Thunder tore an Achilles tendon earlier this week. And when properly diagnosed with the Achilles tendon tear as of Tuesday, he declared himself out of the bout. By Wednesday, late, Ferguson had been lined up as the opponent. Thursday, Galata arrived here and was told that he was fighting Jesse Ferguson instead of Jimmy Thunder. At that point, Galata locked himself in a room, and Larry Merchant tells us he learned that Galata wept about the unexpected circumstance he was facing. He was that freaked out at the notion of having to fight Jesse the Boogeyman Ferguson instead of Jimmy Thunder. So what does he do? He goes out and shuts him out. Let's go up to Michael Buffer with the official particulars. From Valley Park Place, Atlantic City, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Hilton Whitaker and John Pottery both scored about 100 to 89. Gene Williams has it 99 to 90 for the winner by unanimous decision, Andrew. the copy box wipeout galata more than doubling ferguson's punch output nearly quadrupling his connect output and virtually doubling ferguson and connect percentage jabs completely dominated by galata he's got one of the better jabs in the heavyweight division so off of that do you put Andrew Galata back in the pantheon of fighters who will be looking for a chance to fight the winner of Holyfield Lewis? Certainly in terms of the quality of his performances, he might deserve that kind of consideration. Whether he's yet taken that seriously by promoters and by the boxing public, that remains to be seen. Still to come tonight, a look at another rising heavyweight. This one already unanimously anointed as the number three man in the division behind Holyfield and Lewis. That'll be Michael Grant, and he's fighting against a former sparring partner named Ahmad Abdin as he comes back from a long layoff. Uh, very quickly, Roy Jones, I mentioned the question of whether Galata filters into the mix now of possible opponents for the Holyfield Lewis winner. You put him there? Oh, yes, most definitely. He has quick hands. He has that huge frame for a heavyweight that we like to see. He has 
pretty good punching power, and he throws a lot of punches. He showed a lot of movement tonight. He showed a lot of good things that makes for a good fight with any of the top 10 heavyweights right now. All right, and we'll uh, get a look at Grant in just a few minutes. Larry Merchant, your final comments on the Twilight Zone of the heavyweight division, Andrew Galata. Well, 